Okay, let's go. Anyway, we've got Viper here matching up against Tato. And uh, we got red against yellow on a map that kind of blends these colors in. I'm sorry. We have to keep it. It's Viper Tato. We're keeping red, yellow. We're keeping the Red Bull colors here. And uh, we're going to be on bypass. Am I the only one that feels weirded out by the term human resources? Yeah, that is weird. It is weird. It is. It is. Like, that sounds like the aliens have taken over, you know? The human resources department. That's, uh... It is a bit weird. You, you do have a point there. Especially, I can imagine, like, non-native English speakers that haven't been hearing that term their whole life. And then they go to, like, a workplace. You'll have to fit... You'll have to visit human resources. <laughs> They think they're going to be, like, thrown in a grinder and, like, made into a paste or something. <laughs> All right, so we got Bohemians here for Viper and uh, Khmer for Tato. So Tato is thinking about some really fast uptime here with Khmer. And Viper is just thinking about defending and maybe pushing out with some monks or Hufnitsa or maybe a castle somewhere to defend. You cannot build on this terrain. That is one of the quirks of this map. You cannot build on that terrain. The little beachy terrain in the center here. So forward castle is kind of out of the question. And if you wall behind here, your opponent, I don't believe, will have enough space to put a castle even if they kill your walls. So it's really um, really good to just add a wall behind. But the way Viper is walling is quite bad if he's going to wall like that. Because Tato can come forward and place a castle there. But I guess Viper is not concerned about a Khmer castle. HR is the dehumanization of the workforce. The moment human resources exist in a company is the moment you are just a number. That's not true. Really. Because I've been in companies with like nine people that still have human a uh, human resources person now they have other tasks as well but it's just a term now you're already a number you're a 10 out of 10 oh that's so cute dude you guys are so wholesome okay so tato should be going for some ridiculous maybe 23 yep 23 pop 22 vils up to feudal and he'll click castle right away with this. He's got the two Khmer farmers. He's got three on gold. He doesn't need to make the building. So he doesn't need all that many on wood. We can see him with three right now. And pushing in another zebra. Still has the food on this guy. This ostrich over here. And he should be okay. He's got the berries as well. Should be okay. Food is looking good. Gold is looking good. Tata will be able to click up right away. Viper is going up quickly as well. 24 villagers, more of a standard type of play. And he's going to go FC as well. Now, on the outside of this map, there is a lot. There are a lot of zebra. And there are berries out here. 16 berries. There's 16 zebra. There's a zebra for every, there's a zebra for every berry bush. <sighs> Sound of my head exploding. And over here, there's 16. 16? But there's also lions as well. Some extra gold and some extra stone out here too. Lots of gold on this map. Ooh. Yeah, that's not good for Viper. He knows that Tato's up early. You can see his progress. He assumes Tato is going immediate FC, which Tato does immediately. And uh, Tato will get to the Feudal Age first. And that will mean his scout is faster and stronger. Then Viper's scout. So Viper's going to have to run this way. And Viper's going right into his base. This might be trouble. He's going to lose his scout. And the scout from Tato is going to be inside of his base. Oh, no. <laughs> this is terrible, dude. Okay. At least he got some volleys on it. At least he got some volleys on it there. It's only 6 HP. That's not the worst thing in the world. If that scout was still 3 quarters HP wandering around Viper's base and Viper doesn't have loom. Oh, baby. That's a problem. Tato will see the stable, though. He will see the stable. So we know his Viper is going to be contesting relics, most likely.
There was a company I worked with that had five employees. HR w was the boss and was obviously awkward, and I felt like a number. You had five employees and you felt like an... I mean, technically five is the number, I suppose. I wonder if one of my fingers on the, my right hand feels like a number. Definitely wouldn't be thumb. Thumb is an idiot. But like, maybe ring or like middle? Or like pinky? Index? Maybe index. It might be index. No, it would be pinky, wouldn't it? It would be pinky. We're all numbers here on viewer number 358. How'd you find that out? Are you calling that person an idiot? You mean my pinky finger? No? How do you pronounce your last name? Well, wouldn't you like to know? <clears throat> All right, so Siege Workshop, Monastery, Knight from Tato. Now, this is going to be really difficult for Tato to sustain on this eco. He got up to Castle Age super quickly, right? But now he's going to have to push with this with basically no eco. He's got 12 on wood, 5 on food, 6 on gold. His food count is actually looking decent, so he can continue to add scouts or maybe sell some of that, but he doesn't even have a market, so that's an issue. I think now is about the time you turn off auto farm as well. Because yeah, you don't want this villager reseeding that farm for 60 wood. That is a big investment at this stage of the game. Second town center for Viper on the stone, and he goes for a monastery as well. Tato without market? Well, he's Kimura, right? He just got up extremely quickly to Castle Age. You don't have to build the buildings, so why waste 175 wood on a market? Just make your build so precise that you have exactly enough resources to click up. Scorpions and Ram coming. So if Viper went for a Mangonel here, this entire push would be dead. And it actually probably is going to be dead if he would have gone for a Monk, but we all know Viper. He's like, ooh, fervor. It'll make my villagers faster too. Surely I can delay. Surely I can delay making a monk in favor of a technology that benefits my eco. If he had a monk here, this would have been over. This push would have been done. There's no way Tato can get like anywhere near that gate with the monk. I guess he could pull he could go with the rams. And then try and snipe the monk with the, the scorpion. So I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. But a monk certainly would have helped. But anyway, Viper will lose one villager. He's going to stonewall back here. And Tato will run into another TC. And Tato, I think, is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. He does snipe another villager. Viper, no loom as well. Important to note. Now that's coming in. Now that he's been reminded. And he's housed. I wonder if he uses the monks over here or if he goes for the relics. He's going for redemption, okay. So he's not going to go for the relics. Mer scorpions have extra range. Here come the knights. Tato cannot give Viper a knight. Like, you'd much rather delete the knights than give them the Viper. Um, you probably just don't send the knights in at all at this stage. As soon as Viper gets a knight, that knight comes back here. And, well, Tato's coming in over here. Viper is not going to see that immediately, and those knights are going to get some damage against the villagers. Viper does have redemption now. He's getting sanctity, and he's going to lose a monk over here. No, he doesn't. He saves it. And he pulls the villagers back to the TC. Knight's coming in. Not enough room and the monk goes down. Not enough room. The monk was saying, let me in. And the villagers were whispering, piss off. I pay my taxes. Ram's coming in. 
for Tato. Tato has double TC behind this with five villagers queued, no less. Tato is ahead on eco and he's pressuring. Commerce Scorpions, dude. They're kind of going ham here. The extra range is sick. And Viper has a knight now. Uh-oh, Viper has a knight now. Viper has a knight now. He deletes the knight. He's trying to take out this ram, and he manages to take out the ram. Needs to repair the TC a little bit more so that he can hop in. Look at him hit and running with the repair villagers. Hit and repair. <laughs> repair and run, I guess it would be called, right? Repair and run. He's going to hop out and target this again. Tato's still pressuring with the scorpions. Viper trying to jump into the TC. Jump out, convert. Jump into the TC. Jump out, convert. Attack with Vils. This is ridiculous. It's an insane level of micro required to both push like this, but more importantly, defend off the push. And that ram's going to go down. That ram is going to go down, and here come the villagers. Here come the villagers. The important point behind this, though, is that Tato has double TC. Tato has 13 more villagers than Viper. So even if Viper pushes this back, Tato's eco behind is much better than the snakes. It's a really great push, and it's really great management of the eco. I mean, it's Khmer Farms, right? You can't even judge the placements. And now Tato goes for another TC over there. Still has Scorpions coming forward. Viper is going to have to go on like heavy on stone or something and get some aggression of his own. What's up with the score? Well, Viper's been killing Scorpions and producing expensive units, right? Does he get the Scorpion? I think he does. What's inside there? The Vils. The Vils are inside there. If he gets the Scorpion, I bet you he blocks the Ram and converts it. Convert the ram. Switch to the ram. Oh, no. He's going to try and block with the monk. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and now Tato's like, run! Run away! Run away! Quickly now, everyone. What? Viper untargeted? Oh, he's waiting for the villagers to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing Tatsu could do? Oh, undoubtedly. It just looked funny, dude. It just looked hilarious. There's a hole here. Yeah, Viper will realize that. And Viper goes for the third TC. So now things start to stabilize a little bit. Viper has come out to this side. And he is taking that hunt, which is great. Fantastic. He's also taking the relics on this side, too. Tato already has a relic of his own. Viper's going to grab this one. This dude seems remarkably... So, if a, if a Spearman is guarding a monk... A Spearman is guarding a monk. It has no concern for its own safety. And will simply keep looking at said monk while being attacked. This is dedication right here. This is absolute dedication. Oh my god, he takes his job seriously. That Spearman would take a bullet for that monk. Viper trying to wall forward. Tato, 58 villagers. Viper's only 11 behind. Viper's still... You know what? Viper has a better sieve here. Viper does have a better sieve here, even though Tato got such an advantage early. Viper is walling this off. Oh god, 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 god. Oh no! Viper thought he had placed... Hit that gate and the light caver in, and now it doesn't matter what civ you have because you just lost all of your monks and you're gonna lose all of your villagers. And I just wonder, is Viper AFK or something? Okay, converted a mangano, got a trade at least. And he's gonna kill off all those light cav with his scout, but he just lost all of his monks, my friends. Did Spearman Man survive? Spearman Man did not survive. He is dead in the sands somewhere out here, probably. And Tato grabbing a relic from over here. Viper already has two relics, though. 
Dude, I think Viper thought that that had been partially built, that gate. Tato, from Tato's point of view, there was just a wide open hole, so he has to be wondering what was going on with Viper there. Tato is housed once again, by the way. He's going for more right here. And he's got a lot of wood, so the eco balance isn't quite there yet for him. Viper almost has enough for a castle. There it is. It's a great first game, honestly. Really, really fun. And are you serious? These villagers are in the only place over here where there are no zebra. Well, Viper sending them back. Remember, Viper's vills have been moving faster this entire time. If we look at the stats, we'll see that Tato still has more resources gathered. And it's 3k more, so it's actually significant. But the economy for Viper has been fairly efficient. Mildly efficient throughout this whole thing. Tato disgustingly patchy Khmer farms. It doesn't matter. Going for the first blacksmith of the game. Still doesn't have a market to balance his eco. Could have been up by now, I think. Not on stone, so... I wonder what Tato is going to go for. Is he just going to go for the Hussar approach? He's sending villagers forward here, maybe? Okay, Viper coming out this way. Three relics for him, by the way. One relic for Tato, though. It feels like Tato should be sending in a relic, right? There was more than four. Yeah, there's the fifth one right there. And maybe there's another one coming in somewhere. He's looking. He's searching. Is there only five relics on this map? I thought there was more. But it makes. I guess it makes sense. If there was one in here, there'd be two on each side, right? Okay, so Viper getting heavy plow now. It's amazing how this game just calms right down. Viper with a crazy defense. Tato with a crazy push. I'm surprised Viper isn't dead at this moment. Like, remember when Tato had five scorpions here with Rams attacking this and Viper was hopping in and out of the TC with his monks? <laughs> I'm surprised. He's honestly not dead and he's adding the fourth TC. Dead? No, Viper is very much not dead. Archery ranges. Okay. Archery ranges, Fletching coming in, Imperial Age on the way too. Tato is up, Viper isn't even close up. Isn't even close to up. Hmm. This channel has the dumbest emotes. You watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Viper didn't see this. Ah. Oh. I'm kind of surprised by that, I guess. It's going to take Tato a while, though, because it's ranges. It's not stables. He can't just flood right away. It's going to take him a while to build up from there. Viper goes for another TC. That's a 5th TC. He's up to Imperial Age. Two minutes behind Tato. Tato's going to have a lot of res. So is Viper. Archers. Crossbows. More archer ranges. No siege yet over here. Okay, there's the siege right there. Crossbows is like ram? What? Like, what? Crossbow capped ram? Kind of disgusting, right? Yep, it's going to be crossbow capped ram. And it's a castle over here for Viper, and now Viper will spot this. He doesn't even... Oh my god, bro. All he sees are the light cap. He doesn't even see the siege war. Oh my god. He doesn't see any of this. He's pushing over here with pikemen. Tato doesn't have to be very worried about that. And now the arbalists are over here. And there's the capped ramtech. And Tato's going to go for a momentum push here. 
Chemistry is already in for Viper. So upon reaching Imperial H, and Tato has made the mistake many players make when they're ram pushing. Don't, not keeping your army near your siege as the Arbalists are going to come around this side. And Viper adds some archer ranges of his own. So when Viper reaches Imperial H, he can immediately go into Bomber Cannon, Hand Cannon, because he's got Chemistry already. Ballistics is coming in. He's got Bodkin coming in. He's got Elite Skirm to counter these Arbalists. But he only has one Archer range up so far. So he's going to have to build this one and a few more behind. Okay, there's the second one and a third, fourth, and a fifth here. And Viper may be forgetting that you can't make a castle on this terrain. Sending villagers forward. Bit of a mistake, potentially. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. So, Tato knows that in the late game, Khmer against Bohemians, Khmer will likely just die, right? So, we see Viper raiding with Pikeman. So, he's going to try and finish him off in early imp. And he knows that eventually Viper will have the units to easily fight this back. I mean, v Bomber Cannon, if he has enough of them, can fight back both the Rams and the Arbalists. But he's going for a momentum-based push. Like I said, he's trying to get this done quickly. Unfortunately, he's losing Arbalists over here. Very unfortunate for Tato. Just needs to escape with however many he can. And he's going to have to continue to push here. Give himself a good bat position and then eventually go into Hussar, which he's teching into right now. But Khmer have Hussar raids. Yeah, on this map. Yeah. Bomber cannons are already out. It's only one, though. Viper doesn't have the wood for more. He's got the gold. But he needs the wood. And here come the skirms. TC will survive. Tato has pulled his Arbalist away. He's going to wait for a number of Hussar and then come back. Kind of tossing away his rams too. That was a big investment to just leave those. Doesn't pull them back or anything. Just leaves them attacking there. Very interesting. Don't know why you just don't pull those back. I understand saving the Arbalist back here. I get not engaging with those. But... Tossing with the Rams? I don't know. Maybe he wanted to buy himself enough time. Kind of bothers me that BBC beat Rams, but BBT do nothing. Where's the logical consistency? The logical consistency is making the game actually playable. And actually having some sort of counter to Bombard Towers. They did do damage to Rams in uh, Age of Kings. And it was horrible. There's more rams. If you're going to add more rams, then why are you wasting the five capped rams over here? Anyway, Tato coming out. He's got full control over these stones and the golds on both sides. And Viper's on the clock now. He's on the clock. He still has some gold over here, though. This gold, I think he could take control over. He's still got 11 gold there. Low. Yeah, Rams are the counter to Bomber or Towers. Rams are the counter. If you make them do damage to Rams, suddenly it's only like, what, Trebs? Bomber Cannons? Viper paid by the hour on the clock, yep. Gotta talk to Human Resources. <laughs> Gotta have a discussion with the Human Resources Department. Tato going for the 150 vil play. Tato is just trying to starve Viper out from gold. Could work. Could work. Fortified wall is in. Hand cart coming in now for Viper. Tato does not have a hand cart. Or a hand cart coming in for Tato. Sorry. Not Viper. Viper does not have a hand cart. And conscription on the way for Tato as well. So Tato is just going to hold on these sides. He's going to take all this res. He's going to trash army with Khmer and try and hold Viper in. He's not going to try and kill him. He's going to try and outlast him. At this stage of the game, it's very difficult, I think, for Khmer to just straight up kill Bohemians.
I mean, you need what? Like a bunch of bliss elephants, and even then, once Hufnitsa comes in, it's trouble. Hufnitsa help. Siege Ram from Tato. Finally, here we go. For how many, though? Oh, he's got more rams on this side. Okay. So he's switching up the push. He's building up trebs. But unfortunately for him, there's no military over here. It's only siege. And he's going to some bliss elephants. I don't know if that's just like a, a response to the military because he has no production on this side. Or if that's like his actual composition desire. I don't think so. I think it's supposed to be Hussar, Skirm, Arbla, Siege Ram. But he is making some ballistas on that side. Meanwhile, Viper is pushing this stuff back. And Tato's got to be concerned that Viper will come out here with these bomber cannons and take control of the gold. Ah, Rams are just being taken out by Vils, dude. Oh, this... Just... Will they take down the castle? There's still a trebuchet working around. There's ballistics coming out. Double crossbow coming in. So he is planning. He is planning to do it. And Viper's taking his eyes off this area. Oh my god. Dude. How many resources? Someone do the calcs. Someone do the calcs. Viper just lost six bomber cannons. How much gold and how much wood is that? 225 apiece, right? Fifteen hundred gold plus down the drain. Fifteen hundred gold plus. Damn. Elite Bliss Elephant. This is what we were talking about. I didn't think Tata would have the gold for this, but I guess because he has the sides, he will have the gold. And he's got two relics as well. And he's going to get into Bliss Elephant. And this was the only option I could think of against Bohemians. And we're going to see it. We are going to see it here, folks. He still doesn't have chemistry. Which would... Or does he have chemistry? It just doesn't show. No, he doesn't have chemistry. So that's the only upgrade I think he's missing here. And Viper is going to be forced to get Hufnitsa, I believe, to deal with that. Viper is still pushing over here. That was such a throw over on the side. Two thousand seven hundred total resources. Two thousand seven, I guess so. Two thousand seven hundred total resources. Oh my god. It's disgusting. About 4,000 res of you and just for inflation. Okay. Hufnitsa. All right. So, oh man, this is a unit matchup I've never seen. Oh, Hufnitsa Halvadir versus Ballista Elephant Hussar. Interesting. Oh, well. well. You should reevaluate. The next time someone gives you some orders to run across an open field against cannons, maybe you should think about that. And Tato's going in! He's had enough of this. Tato's going in through the side. He has had enough of this. He's going to chop through into the eco of Viper, but Viper will be able to spot that with his Bombard cannons. Meanwhile, over here, Viper's still clearing up some of this stuff. Tato's still solidifying. Tato needs to be careful about the helps getting close to his... Oh, God. Oh, don't let the helps close to your ballista elephants, dude. Oh, they Shrek if they get inside. You need to kill them before they get there. If Nitsas are almost in, it's in. Oh, boy. Oh, this is going to be rough for Tato. Tato is now trying for a push down the center. Viper will see that. Another Siege Ram push here. Viper's going to notice that. And Viper is destroying these Ballista Elephants on this side. Cross, or sorry, Scorpion's now coming out from Tato. I don't know how many that is, though. It's only it's only two over here, and he's not continuing production. But Viper has killed both the Trebs. 
trying to defend over here what she's doing. Nothing doing over here. Except more Ballista Elephants. And you can see how difficult this is for Khmer to finish this off against Bohemians. Tato had such a good early push. He's now trying to kill all of the Hypnitsa from Viper. Looks like he cleared up three of them. And Viper has 1,400 gold in the bank. This might be a wood game. I don't want to alarm anyone. But there is a possibility this is a wood game. We'll see. And Tato should have the advantage in a wood game. With 75% of the map control and the ability to chop trees. Nisa taking care of that ram, doing some extra damage to the castle as well. Meanwhile, on this side, ram for Viper. So, Viper got capped to ram too. Tato is building up some barracks now over here. And Viper is... I guess the only question is, can Viper push? Ta oh, no. Dude, if Viper sees... Bro, if Viper sees this and, it, and waits for the elephants to cluster up here... He knows. He knows. He knows. He does know. He does see it. And he's going to be like, oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Viper, see it. Viper, just shoot it. Oh. He can't range. He's just out of range. Tato, one tile away from certain death. And Viper is going to have to back up. Tato is cutting through to his eco. Crop rotation even coming in from Tato. We see the infantry armor as well. Taking the, the champion line. Oh, but there's a Hoof needs a here and Tato needs to run. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was just out of range there. He couldn't shoot. He saw it. You could definitely see like the anguish from Viper, right? It's like, oh man, they're all clustered up there. I got to shoot. Didn't happen, and Tato is now pushing on this side. Not going to be a wood game. Looks like Tato is just going to take this. I don't know. 71 military against 51, but Ballista Elephant are kind of nuts. They are kind of nuts. Arson coming in. For anyone wondering if Skirms do well against Ballista Elephant, they don't. Split pushing is the key here. Yep. You're not wrong. Viper's going to need army over here. He's going to need army over here. Finally, hand cart. Oh, my God. It's been so long. And he's adding in He's adding in hand cannons. Because he saw the infantry switch. He sees the, um, the two-handed swordsman. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Tato has to be careful. If needs aren't doing that much damage against the Ballista Elephants, but... You have a lot of them over here. You got eight of them, right? And Tato needs to be careful to just hold over here. If Viper ever clears up this army, these castles are dead instantly from those things. That attack round did nothing. Wow. That one did something. Do Khmer get herbal medicine? I feel like Tato should begin to puff the herb in the castles. Wagenberg tactics to make the Hoofnitsa faster. More mon food monks. <gasps> Hussite reforms. We found a situ folks. We have found a situation. We have found a player skilled enough to do it, where Hussite reforms actually might be the best play against ballista elephants. Oh god. Oh god. Tato, just 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 stop. Just stop. Shout out to Reform Captain Flasta. Did he suggest it? Oh god, Phyllis Sullivan's cutting from all angles. 
They're coming through the trees! <laughs> Dude, Tata, every time Tata takes the fight over here, these Hoofneets are ridiculous! Watch this castle just... Oh, that castle... If all of the Hoofneets attacked that, that castle would have just folded there. Hussite Reforms is in. That means all the monks and all the monk technologies cost only food. So he's not even spending... He's not even spending gold on that. And he's got 47 farmers. His food count is still very low, though. Usually the problem with Hussite Reforms, it's not that it's a bad technology. It's that usually when you're going into monks, it's earlier in the game and all of your eco is on gold. You can't afford... You don't have enough wood to put into farms. So the tech doesn't make any sense. But... Later on in the game, in a game like this, where it's kind of stalemated, it might work. Oh, Viper attack grounding in between these two traps is going to take out both of them. He's going to take out both of them here, folks. And Villager is repairing behind that. Meanwhile, on this side, who needs to... Uh... Viper! Viper is not paying attention! Viper is not paying attention! Please don't lose all of these who needs again! Oh, but it's Tato! That loses the Ballista Elephants. Oh my goodness. What a game. So many crazy little engagements. We see Tato coming in here this time. And he's going to take out another Hufnitsa. Maybe two, maybe three. There goes another one. He's hunting this guy down. Monks are starting to convert now. Mer do not have heresy. Do they even have faith? I don't know. They should, right? And it's two-handed swordsman, Ballista Elephant Hussar, against Monk, Hand Cannon, Hufnitsa Hell. How many kills do these things have? 40, with nine of their own men being the unfortunate victims. And Viper is running out of wood at the back. Viper's going to need to start taking wood in the middle. So I think Viper is going to have to secure this somehow. This. The list elephant is still being very annoying. It's almost like they agreed to go with weird units this game. They have to at this stage of the game. Viper, no. Oh my god, not again. Oh my god, I can't look. I can't look. Huh? Huh? <laughs> That's disgusting, dude. That's absolutely disgusting. It's the GG moment. It is. He has no gold left to replace those. And Viper, a couple times this game, was maybe looking somewhere else. You know, focusing on a different area and sending the Vnitz in without any Halb support. I don't know what his Halbs and hand cannons were doing behind the trees here. But uh, Tato taking this with Ballista Elephants. Respect. Respect. Fighting against Bohemians with Khmer. And he came up with all the options. He had the two-handed swordsman. Two-handed swordsman. Ballista Elephant, Hussar, Ram, Treb. Great. The food Monks, Hussite Reforms just never, Viper all? never really got a chance a to get into it. 17 is the natural number following 16 and preceding 18. It is a prime number. 17 is the sum of the first four prime numbers. Thank you, GoForDam, for your prime subscription we appreciate it here as well as prime big prime number people here any prime numbers in chat we are big this is deep prime number territory for sure that's what takes that one no okay dude what a crazy game that was that was an awesome game in every sense tato pushing on like three different fronts at the same time viper just couldn't handle it Halb Hoof needs a composition. You want to be fighting in a choke point. Very difficult to beat if fighting in a choke point. But Viper was fighting on three areas. Very tough for him to defend there. Loss for Bohemians. Win for Khmer. Viper's draft is insane. It is, but he just lost with Bohemians against Khmer. So starting to look a little bit less insane. Um, Duder, I, uh, I enjoyed your Reddit discussion the other day. I did. Uh, the one about um, devs not knowing when sieves are going to be broken. I believe that was you, right? I think you had a lot of good points. And I've been saying that for a long time. I'm 
Nice, thank you. Yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was good. Fuck you all. Your lives are so sad. I get a charity tax break just for hanging out with you. But what you have to remember, Umduder, is that it's much easier to just blindly complain about something than look at it logically. Right. It's much, and it feels much nicer, too. It's more satisfying. Devs! <laughs> Urban, thank you for the gift sub there, Umduder. It's a good one. It's also more fun, exactly. Exactly. Fortunately, in our community, I think um, when people are getting angry at the devs, I think they're more just like they're just yelling out their frustrations and less actually getting angry at the developers. There's a few people out there that will get angry at like the literal people behind the game. But I think most of our like pros or influencers or whatever realize that our developers have actually done a fairly actually a really good job especially in like the last year and a half with the game like the game is in such a good state right now god damn it krasini why are there pawns in my wood line yep all right nikov is that you is that you nikov Well, Gymbox, it's actually a new game. So, like, that doesn't really hold up, but... Yeah, like, those complaints for HD were justified, although HD didn't have much uh, support from Microsoft. DE does have a full team. Full dev team. Um, stuff like servers and matchmaking is different from the people who handle the actual game itself. It's a different studio as far as, far as I know. Um, so that's completely separate. But uh, as far as the game goes, like there's a few issues, but they're minor. They're really minor. Okay. Uh, let's get into the next game here, and we are going to... We are going to Vintage Arena. And if you're wondering what's the difference between Vintage Arena and the arena I see on ladder, well, we can immediately see the difference. This is the old, old arena. And there is very little space to do any activities here. Look at this. Like, what? This is the old arena that we know and love. Like, what? <laughs> I'm gonna go forward castle drop. Oh wait, there's a wood line. I can't. This should favor the defender here, big time. Right? It should. Anyway, and I wonder who the defender is gonna be. We have Malay against Burgundians. Malay can get a super fast Imperial Age time. Um, and start pressuring right away. Burgundians, well. Burgundians can get the relics, contest for the relics, get that golden food income, and get their eco upgrades earlier as we see Viper already with the wood upgrade here. So their economy will be insane, but Malaysia uptimes will be crazy. And if I'm looking at a map like this where you're so close, even with those wood lines in there giving maybe a better defense for Viper, like if this wood line wasn't here, that would be so beautiful for Tato. Um, I think like a forward castle... In this position, fast Imperial Age time, I think Viper might just be dead. Let's see. We got one relic over here, kind in between them, but closer to Viper. This one closer to Tato, this one closer to Viper, this one closer to Tato, and this one technically neutral. So relic generation is, is pretty fair here, I would say. Viper's gold is forward though, and that's concerning. 
Very concerning. Tato's gold is back. Tato's main stone is back from the wall. Tato's got a really nice base layout. He's got his gold and his stone over here too. Viper's golden stone is all in this area. Look at that. Both the secondary golds over in this side. Gold situation is kind of brutal for Viper. Though he has one at the back there. Is it generally stupid to try and ram down a forward castle? It depends. But yes, generally speaking, it is fairly stupid to try and ram down a forward castle. Viper can't really play this boomy. If he plays it boomy, especially against Malay, I think he's just dead. And Tato's already going up. Is he going to go up for the eco upgrades? Is he going to do the, the fast eco upgrade approach again? We have seen that less nowadays than we did when DE first came out. He's definitely not going for a tower rush because the walls are 1800 HP. That's the vintage arena style, right? Walls used to be this... Walls used to not change their HP based on age. So you'd never go for like a tower push. That was like the ultimate meme. You could go for a tower hop. To like put a tower on the edge and hop your villagers inside. But that was it. And here we go. That's what goes for the eco upgrades. Siege Tower Rush. Really? Why did Ta Tato pick Water Sieve? What the fuck? What? You bet on Tato, and now you're saying, why did he pick a Water Sieve? Malay's a great Arena Sieve, dude. Fantastic. Spud, I'm not going to redeem BTTV emotes in the middle of casting a game. You know this. Why? Wait. You don't have to at me. Alright, so Tats has got the eco upgrades. Viper's on the way to Feudal Age. Viper already has those uh, eco upgrades, though. And Tato is going to be ahead by, what, two villagers by the time Viper reaches? <laughs> they were staring at each other through the gap in the wall. Hello. Hi. I added so you could find it easier when you redeem. How? But the... the okay. <clears throat> Just make sure you copy the link and send it again. One in between the games. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Spud is very excited. <laughs> She's very excited about whatever emote she redeems. She's not looking for answers. She's not thinking about solutions. She's just very excited. <laughs> All right, so Viper's on the way to Castle Age. He's gone for the stable approach. Um, he's going to go for the uh, Castle Age eco upgrades. So there's a heavy plow coming in right there, and he canceled bow saws, so he wants to get some farms down immediately. Then he'll go for bow saw. And he's going to start queuing up scouts, and Tato will be ahead in villagers. But Viper will be ahead in eco upgrades because of Burgundians. There's the market for Tato. He's going to be pretty uh, similar uptime to Viper at this rate. Right? Just needs a blacksmith or a stable. Is he going to go stable? Scouts staring at each other through the wall. Better love story than Twilight. Is that still a joke? I thought the sun was setting on that joke. Dave, you should have a reward for 100 points to make someone a mod. 100 points. Don't get carried away with your point redeems. 100 is a lot. 32 bills for Tato. 26 for Viper. Castle Age is coming in for Tato. He's going to be about 45 seconds behind Viper. And uh, Viper is already... Well, he's he's only produced one scout. Tato going for a scout of his own as well. Really hard to avoid fighting on this vintage arena. Tato gets the first hit. That's actually kind of big.
at Dave AOE check economy gathered total resources gathered please at this stage currently of our match that's was ahead barely but he is ahead with more vills so Malay eco why would Tanto pick a water sieve on arena Malay eco actually better confirmed better than Burgundians confirmed Monastery coming out here for Tato. Spears are so toxic. <laughs> spoken like a... <laughs> spoken like a Frank's main. <laughs> Frank's Arabia main. <laughs> Spears are toxic. <laughs> I've seen you on Reddit. <laughs> All right, Lightcap is in for Viper. Lightcap coming in for Tato. And uh, Viper's going to snag this relic. He's probably going to snag... Well, that one's pretty free. That one's fairly free, so you might want to go after this one next. As Tato tries to look for that monk, he's not going to find it, though. You will see the light cap from Viper. He's only got three light cap of his own. Viper just missed those with the Spearman. And Tato's going to have some issues here contesting these relics. Gonna have some real issues. Viper will get this one too. And I think the best that Tato can hope for is three. A re more realistic number is probably one in this situation. Viper just has such a military advantage. Maybe Tato can get a Spearman though. There's the second one. Viper going for that third TC. Tato already... Second and third TC almost up. 38 bills against 33. Tato will probably grab this relic. Viper's looking to snag this one. <gasps> Viper didn't pull it back in time. Nice snipe there from Tato. Viper could have gotten that relic back 100%. As Viper tries to split around this force. Tato trying to guard his monk. And Viper will take that monk out. He could have got that back 100%, but he didn't notice immediately. Obviously, didn't shift click back to the monastery, so the monk was just standing there, and the light cab was able to snipe that check. Resources gathered, please. And Tato's still ahead. Malay Eco is simply better than Burgundians. Sorry, guys. The sound was cutting out because my microphone came unplugged. I just plugged it back in. Malay Eco is better. Like I said, we figured it out. Malay goes better than Burgundians. Underrated. Walls are toxic. Vils are toxic. Spears are toxic. Light Cav are toxic. Is there any uh, unit that isn't toxic here? What are these spearmen doing? What are you... What? What? So Tato has lost all but one of his light cap. This is a travesty. He's gotten one relic. Like I said, realistic. Realistic relic number would be one. And he's had a big investment to only get one relic. Big, big investment. As Viper goes to that fourth town center. Tato should be thinking about uh, some sort of forward pressure. But it's really tough now that Viper has full map control. With these light cab and the spearmen. See, I think Tato should have just gone straight forward castle build here with Malay. Forward castle, fast imp. If you put a castle around this area, Viper can't really snag two of those relics anyway, so you're denying them. It's really tough to deny a forward castle for Malay, too. But. Now he's going to have to contest Viper with a better eco for the snake and more relics. Identical times on handcart. Well, one player was getting wheelbarrow. The other was getting handcart. So I 
Oh, 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 that's ugly. <laughs> Viper deletes the one that wasn't being converted. Lol. Let me actually take a look back. Did Tato switch at the last second? I feel like he might have. So he's converting this one. No, Viper just Viper just misclicked. He re or he read too deeply and he thought Tato was going to switch. So he deleted the one on the right because the one on the left would just be too obvious for Tato to continue to convert. That's funny. <clears throat> No post here from Viper. Tato's still not on stone. He's going to go up to him. He's going to go with Bomber Cannon, Arbalist Approach. He's not really going to have any units by the time he gets there, though. Like, what? Five or six crossbow, maybe, by the time he gets to him? Only 11 on gold. He's got a lot on food, but that's it. There's another archer range. Crossbow upgrade coming in. <clears throat> so much on food here, it's crazy. How many how many crossbow did I say he would have? Five or six, right? He queued up a battle elephant for a second. And then went back to the light cap. Imperial Age coming in for Viper as well. Loom on the way in for him too. Does Tato have Loom? He does not. And the Ram is working away. We got a Magnol there. We got light cap. We've got Archer Rangers being added in from Viper as well. And Tato's about to hit Imperial Age. And he's going to have... Okay. Never mind, guys. He's going to have one crossbow when he hits him. Maybe two. One crossbow. <laughs> oh, God. I thought it would be bad. I didn't expect that. This is good, though, from Tato to take out those monks. He's going to take out another one. And he might actually take out this Mangonel, too. So he's clearing up a little bit of the pressure. Oh! One HP left. One HP. One HP. Here comes chemistry. Here comes Bodkin. Viper's still a minute away, and Viper's going into skirmishers. Just needs to hold the front of this area. If he holds this area, he's fine. Siege workshop. Or just even if he holds the middle of the map, because look at this. Gold, gold, stone, gold, gold. He has all the relics already. It's finally going to his main gold. He was taking the gold at the back here. Which, uh, it would have been really nice for him to be on this main gold from the beginning. But he was nervous, probably about a forward castle placement or something like that. So now he's got to venture forth for this one. Because the one in the back is completely gone. And that means he's going to almost be within range of the soon-to-be Arbalist. Viper's getting everything. Chemistry. Bracer. Final wood upgrade. Going for more skirms. He doesn't have any armor for the he doesn't have any armor for the skirms, guys. Oh no. Viper has no armor for those skirmishers. Tato can like five shot these things. And there's the armor right there, and there's Cavalier coming in. It is enough for the moment though. To push Tato away. Tato has nothing to tank the shots from those skirms, so he has to run away with the crossbows anyway. But here we go. Now the skirms are going to die. One bomber cannon only for Tato. Only one bomber cannon. Viper's res still looking kind of redonk. He's got a lot of stone in the bank, a lot of food, a lot of gold as well. Still getting his text, getting masonry now. Just trying to buy himself enough time with these skirmishers. And that second armor is coming too. And that's going to make these skirmishers a whole lot more threatening. As Tatu comes out this side. He's got 16 on stone. So Tatu is thinking about a forward castle somewhere. And he's pressuring this wall. So Viper will have to dedicate units in defense. It's going for bomber cannons of his own. 
Viper going pallet? He can. With his economy. I think he can. Ooh, needs to sort that out. Maybe put those on farms. Ooh, nice little, ooh. Nice little attack rounds there from the bombard cannons from Tato. Viper backing up, and he is going paladin. He is. I wonder if Tato will read this. Viper's kind of hiding it at the moment. He's going skirmisher bomber can. He's hiding all of it. Look, all of his stables, actually the two stables that he has, are in the back here. So Tato doesn't see that at all. Nice micro there from Tato. Tato's got a lot of our bliss. This is really risky. Viper's taking a huge risk here, switching into Paladin at the moment. I can see it paying off, but I can also see it not paying off. And Tato is going to lose the castle. No, he deleted. Oh, my God. Yo, Tato saw those cannons coming over mid-flight from those bombard balls or whatever. Cannonballs. He deleted the castle so he would save himself the stone. Sick. That was a really good reaction from him. And he's going for another one here. No. Right? Okay, he's pushing all this stuff back. Viper sees that foundation. Tato splits away. Viper can't attack that. And now the castle has enough HP. Totally calculated from Tato. He's playing really well at the moment. But here come the Paladin from Viper. 126 vils for Tato. 122 vils for Viper. He's Paladin. We'll get micro down by those herbalists. They only have the plus two armor. Viper's kind of using them as a shield for his skirmishers and his bomber cannons. But what an attack ground! What an attack ground from Tato on the two bomber cannons from Viper. The bomber cannons from Tato go down. This castle, will it go up? No, it's at 78% right now. Skirmishers still attacking. Bomber cannons still targeting the villagers. Viper's house at 160. Tato sending more. And Viper's going to have to retreat from this. Crazy hold here from Tato. Once this castle goes up, Viper will lose this bomber cannon. All these skirms. And he'll have to retreat. You could see what he was thinking with the paladins, right? He sent them in to gain himself room for the skirmishers and bomber cannons. But... Tato with that insane attack ground. Took out those two bomber cannons, and I think Viper couldn't push after that. If Tato didn't get that, or these two bomber cannons, even if he only gets one, I think Viper wins that fight. I think he denies the castle. Or at least takes out the foundation. But instead, he only had one bomber cannon to play around with. And Tato is going for another forward castle here. He's now teching into the armor upgrade. The only one that Malay get, by the way. And he's got 37 Arbalists. He's only got one stone, however. So <laughs> repairing this is going to be it. Look, <laughs> he's like, he tapped it. <laughs> he tapped it. <laughs> Battle elephant for Tato. Yeah, this castle was uh, ill-advised. Every castle is a forward castle in this map. Yep. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Architecture on the way for Viper. That's what coming out with some bomber cannons. Elite battle elephant on the way. Viper will see that one battle elephant. will see more being added in. 37 Arbalist still. Viper with four bomber cannons. Remember, Viper has four relics. Viper also has the potential for Burgundian Vineyards as well. As the bomber cannon goes down, the Treb will die though. Still, four bomber cannons to work on this castle. No stone in the bank there from Tato. He's thinking about buying stone, I think, because he sold his wood. But he simply uses the gold to queue up more battle elephants, and he's coming. Viper, taking the infantry upgrades. Thinking about how, but he's going into pikemen right now. So Tato has a limited window to do damage, but I love this from Viper. Tato fully realizing what ha what's happening here. Viper trying to go for the raids. This house is still not complete. This house is still not complete. And Tato will get it. He'll get it in time. The Paladin can't do anything. And the main army from Tato is still pushing on this side. Arbalist coming over to deal with those Paladin. 
Skirmisher is being folded there by the Arbalists. What's the siege behind this looking like for Tato? Not very good. He's putting all of his gold into Battle Elephants. He needs to win now. If he doesn't win now, he's never going to win this game. Long protracted game here against the Burgundians with four relics. You're never going to win that. He's going to attempt to take him down immediately. Here come the pikemen for Viper. And Viper can probably repair this castle forever, right? It's got 1,500 stone in the bank. Yeah, he can repair this castle for light, like light years. No, eons. He's light years ahead in stone, and he's even selling stone. He's so confident. He's even selling stone. We see the Paladin come over. Sent down by the Arbalist. He's trying to go for that Bomber Cannon. Doesn't quite get it. Paladin's going for the raids. 152 vills for Viper. And I think he has Burgundian Vineyards, right? What is he... Is, was he repairing something with that gold? I guess he was. Oh, he was repairing this stuff. Oh, he's got a push over here. Trying to get him with the Paladin. Even a couple Paladin in there can be so brutal. Here comes Tato though, 35 elite battle elephants. And Tato's reaching the point of not caring. Burgundian Vineyard's coming in, finally. Halbadir coming in as well. Tato is, is at the point of not caring. He's not reaching that point, he's already reached it. He's already there. He says, I don't care about your halbs. I'm gonna push now, if I don't push now, I lose. I will use my elephants as siege to take out your castle. My arbalist will be behind, take out your halbadirs and your paladins. You're into my base. That's awfully annoying, Mr. Viper. But I have elephants over here to deal with your bomb raid cannons as well. And I have a significant number of elephants. As Tato is going to take out the bomb raid cannons over there. And Tato is pushing back over here. Oh my god. Can Viper stop this? I think he can. I think it's just such a difficult area. Tato needs to take out that castle. I don't know what he's doing with the elephants. Just attack the castle. You're losing so many of them. You should be sitting here with the Arbalists. But instead, you're, you're leaving the castle alive. Waiting for your bomber cannons to do the job. And the castle is getting a lot of useful kills. 30 kills and Viper is just simply targeting the Arbalists with the castle. And the Arbalist number is falling. I think you needed to take out that castle with your elephants. And the castle's still alive. Castle is still alive. Tattoo's trying to deal with this stuff over here. Yep. The castle was simply targeting the Arbalest. And look at how many kills that castle had. 45. He could have taken it out. He decided to go for the units. He was waiting for his bomber cannons to do something. And the castle is alive. ACCM, thank you for the raid. Thank you for the 145 person raid, ACCM. Can't wait to see you, dude. Can't wait to see you. Also, ACCM, for anyone who doesn't know, has been an absolute beast recently. Really good games against Mr. Yo. ACCM, if you're still here, what did you think about the Golden Swamp game against Mr. Yo? <laughs> Vikings against Berbers. <laughs> That was so stupid, dude. Bro, this that that was man. If he takes out that castle, Viper can still retreat back here, but I think Tato is in such a better position. Just hit the castle a couple times with the elephants. It goes down and then you can have all your Arbalus army there dealing with the halberdiers and your elephants in front. I think that's a pretty big throw. Viper doing a fantastic job keeping that castle alive against just the bomber cannons, though. And he's doing a great job just raiding with the paladins in the back, being distracting, right? Pushing over here, going for fortified wall now, holding on this side. Great walls in front of the castle there. Fantastic walls in front of the castle. Hoarding's even coming in. Murder holes coming in, and Tato calls the GG. Well played from Viper.
I th- I would have loved to see Tato target that though. I like I don't know how many times I can say it. I would have loved to see him just clear that up with the elephants. And then you actually have an Arbalist army to support instead of just them dying to the castle. It seems so weird. So weird. Well, 89 Arbalists, 99 Halberdiers there. And uh, great game from Viper. Good game from Tato as well. He almost made it work there. And the score is 1-1. Yeah, yeah, Spud. Well, okay, Spud. Okay. Steppies emote. Steppies is now part of the channel for Spud. AW2 is a stupid game I'm taking up farming. Ah, man of culture. Just like Webs or Tristan. Okay, so that was a win with Burgundians and a loss with Malay. Viper Civ Draft still looks better. Like, it's looked better the entire time. I guess Tanto has poles. Let's see what his home maps are. He has humans for fortress and Chinese. Okay. Humans and Chinese both good for fortress. Uh he's got poles. He's got Italians. Italians. Play Italians on Jungle Rumble. Hmm. Viper plays Mayans on Fortress? They don't feel as good as they used to. Poor Tato didn't stand a chance with the water. <laughs> Tata's eco was actually better than Viper's, like, well into Castle Age. Even with the cheap, cheaper eco upgrades, even with them earlier, just because he's saving time going up to the, the next age, Tata's eco was better than Viper's with Malay. Puts that into perspective, doesn't it? Now, once the relics came in, then that was an issue. Interesting. Tato is not going to use Cumans for Fortress. He's probably going to use Chinese there. He's going to use Cumans for Jungle Rumble. And we've got Viper going with Lithuanians here. And I would probably favor Lithuanians in this situation. But think about this. Tato has three villagers on the outside. Both players have three villagers on the outside in Jungle Rumble. You have to cut through the wood lines to get there. Um, you also have a main eco in the center that's like an arena base. And then we have what, like 90, I think it's like 92,000 gold in the center or something. 94K in the center here. 92K. I think I included one patch over there. Tato might go up to Feudal Age really fast, drop a stable on the outside here to get scouts uh, pressuring and then go for a TC on the outside with three bills. The TC will take a very long time to build uh, uh, the feudal age TC for the humans. But if you get a town center and if you get eco on the outside, you can deny your opponent from getting a foothold over there. So it could be really good. It really could be good. Malay were considered number one arena so be for Burgundians for buff. Yeah, Malay have been good on arena for a very long time. Not just a water sieve. All right, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. You can follow uh, Ted here, the scout, okay?
Okay, Ted doing Ted things, typical. Uh, examining the outer wood line there. And it looks like Viper has actually lost some HP, so he tried to dive. Viper tried to dive on this villager. He sees the mill there, and he's lost a lot of HP, so not the greatest thing in the world. Actually, really bad. And Tato's on the way to Feudal Age here with 18 villagers. Viper probably has a suspicion on the strategy choice from Tato, right? He knows that the second TC will likely go on the outside there. But Tato is a master of mixing things up. So we'll see what he decides to do. Looks like a villager is also weak over here. Did she... What happened with her? Did she, like, get hit by a wolf or something? This one's trying to hide inside the goat. I am the goat. And I thought they smelled bad. On the outside. <laughs> Anyone know that reference? <laughs> there it is. There we go. <laughs> the Revenant style, exactly. All right, so what does Tato go for? He goes for the second TC on the inside. He doesn't go on the outside. Okay. So um, he's going to go for that second TC. He's going to cut through here. And it makes sense. It does. Because it takes so long to build. Even with nine villagers building this, it would take so long for only three to make it out there. He's just going to try and chop through as fast as he can, I guess. Star Wars, yes, we know. I showed up literally as you're quoting Empire. Would, would you guys... Yeah, you guys are going to judge me. I have two trilogy based opinions that are very unpopular the original trilogy of star wars empire strikes back is not my favorite movie in that trilogy i'm a new hope fan and the batman trilogy uh the newer batman trilogy i like batman begins the best and the actually three very controversial trilogy opinions. I'm not saying they're bad movies. I just like the other ones better. And Tato's going for a rush on the wall here. 1080 HP on this wall. I also like the Phantom Menace, the best of the prequels. I'm not saying the others are bad. Oh, Viper's going to try and quick wall these villagers in. He's got a Spearman coming out here. He already has a barracks. Lithuanian Spearmen are quick, and Viper's sending a villager all the way over here. He's going to delete this wall, make this, or maybe a gate over here. Okay, it didn't work. He was trying for the trap. He had three villagers ready to spring that trap. And Tata will keep working away on this wall. Wall's having 1,080 HP. Hmm. The second one is significantly more controversial than the Star Wars one. Yeah. I think a big part of it has to do with the fact that when I saw the second Batman movie, I was actually in Yukon. I was in Whitehorse. <laughs> it's weird as that is. I saw it in a shitty theater. I was tired. And the movie went on for like three hours. It's a very long movie. And I, and I like halfway through, I was just I was just ready to fall asleep. Because we had had like a 12-hour drive or something that day, my dad and I. And for some reason, we went out to see a movie. And, uh... Yeah. Why were you in Whitehorse? Because we were... My dad and I, after... I graduated high school... My dad, um... Took me on a trip up north. And this vill is almost about to die to that crocodile. Oh my god. Viper saving it. So we went up to the Arctic Ocean, and then we went over to Alaska uh, with a rented car, and then we took a week-long canoe trip on a river up there, just me and him, so. The 
It was crazy, Viper sa saving that. But also crazier that the Crocodile decided to go after the one weak Vill and Tato is being very annoying with this scout. Very, very annoying. Scout still has 42 HP too, so Viper has to be very careful. Look at Tato. He's just hunting for this villager. Tato, double TC behind this, by the way. 37 villagers, 38 now. And uh, 29 villagers from Viper. As Viper is thinking about going up to Castle Age. Did you get bit by mosquito? Oh, dude. I get bit by mosquitoes everywhere. The mosquitoes are not what you have to worry about up there. There are flies that are, like, significantly bigger than deer flies. They're slow, and you can hear them coming from, like, 100 feet away. But if they bite you, they take a chunk. Like, deer flies take a big bite, for sure, and you start bleeding and stuff. But if those things bite you... They call them bulldogs up there. I don't know what their actual, like, name is. Like, you know, classification from a biologist, but... You will bleed for a long time. Deer fly? No, they're bigger than deer, deer flies. They're bigger and nastier than deer flies. I've been bit by deer flies before and horse flies. We call them the horse flies here in the Midwest. No, 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 no. We have horse flies around here. These are different. Mouse puddles. Horse flies and deer flies are different, by the way. Mouse puddles. Deer flies, if I remember correctly, have like a greenish tint on their head. Horse flies are a little bit smaller than deer flies as well. Okay, so Tato 51 villagers. 33 villagers for Viper. Tato is really ahead, and he's pushing too. Viper goes for one skirm, he goes for a stable here. Viper still has these villagers alive. That is incredibly impressive. Tato has been harassing him the entire time. The flies just get bigger the deeper into Canada you go. Yeah. Should Tato do a capped ram push? I don't think so. I think this is probably enough. He doesn't have enough for another tower here, so I don't know what these villagers are really planning. The archers are in, and once a knight comes out on the field, Tato's going to have to give this up for sure. Uh, but I think he's forced Viper into enough like resource investment into this defense. I think he'll be happy. And here comes another scout, Viper. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is going to be tough for him, but Viper's managed to... Do Dude... The resiliency of these villagers has been clutch. The absolute resiliency of these villagers on this side. And Viper will now go for knights. So now Tato is the one that's got to be a little bit concerned about the outer edge. Which up to this point he's been controlling. Villager goes down over here. Eco KD is only one at this point. More archers coming forward. Viper is going to have knights on this side. Only has bloodlines. No other upgrades. And Tata will go for the gold. And Tata's going to start thinking about Castle Age. Tata will be tracking this stuff. He's sending a villager for a wall over here. Humans don't get stone walls. So you're going to have to go for the more HP palisade. And this scout is going to be looking for these vills. But unfortunately for Tato, the palisade walls are already up. And the town center is going to be coming down on the outer edge. So Viper will still have a presence there. Tato retreats to the tower. Viper's still without armor on those knights, so he can't really justify investing against that. And there's full stone walls here for Tato, so he should be safe at home. He's trying to cut through on the outer edge here. Looks like the knight is chasing the scout right towards this villager. As Tato attempts to complete these palisade walls. Also going for walls on this side to keep himself safe. He'll probably go for a TC out here if he gets the chance with just a couple villagers. And he's going to have this wall up in time before Viper can send that knight over. There we go. Castle Age on the way. 67 villagers. Full 30 villagers ahead. Don't get it twisted here, folks. Do not get it twisted. Tato is still significantly ahead of Viper. But Viper with a TC on the outside. This is going to look really good for him. Or his chances as Tato walls behind this wood line. 
to deny Viper from cutting out. And escaping. I think Tato's going to try for a big push down the center here. Kill all this eco. He knows Viper still has resources out here available. But it's going to take time to build up a big economy out here, right? He wants to deny all of these guys escaping. And any of the reinforcements as well. Any of the knights coming back to the outer edge as he saves villagers too. Viper has not killed a villager from Tato yet. With the knights on the outside, with the knights on the inside, Tato being forward with these bills, Viper has not taken a villager yet. That's so impressive. Eco stats time, it should be way ahead for Tato, right? Yeah, I mean, 3k ahead. It's crazy. Look at the wood, look at the gold, the food, everything. Viper now goes for a ram over here. Tato will have double stable. Also has a stable over here, which he goes for bloodlines from. Viper has killed the villager back here, so he might escape. And the wall is not completed. Ah, uh, yeah, the wall isn't completed, it doesn't look like. Tato goes for a gate. Here comes the ram. And Tato is going to wait for his knights to show up. He's got two knights over here. Tato still has archers inside here. Still has the villagers here. So we can start micering down the knights. Only plus one armor and bloodlines on these. And he's got the towers to fire too. So he might lose one tower. I'd be surprised if he loses that second one though. Feels like Viper can't really take that out. Yeah. He's going to lose the rim. Build count difference, but common is 2 TC feudal. Uh, not really common to be 30 villagers ahead. More like 20. But Viper's evened it out somewhat. And looks like Tato's house now. Making some more houses around here. One more house. That's not going to be enough. You need another one, my friend. It's going for a TC over here with one villager. Wide open. <laughs> oh, boy. Tato needs more houses. More house. Build more. There we go. Perfect. And Viper goes for another TC. He's out. He's escaped. He has officially escaped. Which map is this? Jungle Rumble Chemical. Come on now. Opinions on Step Lancers? Uh, not here. Not in this situation. Siege Workshop for Tato. 80 villagers against 64. So Viper has evened it out somewhat. And he's got Wheelbarrow too. Tato with the second farm upgrade, second wood upgrade coming in. Viper does not have those yet. Wheelbarrow would be really useful with 82 vills for Tato as well. So we see Viper already grabbing relics. And Tato grabbing relics as well. <gasps> Tato? Tato! Okay, Tato saw it with the monk. He's targeting it with the monk. Oh, 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 Tato, 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 95, 96. Oh, he's got more vills here. Okay. He's got more vills here. Knight would have denied the TC, but Tato cut through, I think, and he's got more villagers coming out for that. TC is going to be harassed. Meanwhile, Tato... He is going for that second armor upgrade. He's got 10 knights there. Sanctity coming in for Viper. Very dangerous. Playing with Lithuanians with the monk knight composition. He's already got plus two on the knights from the relics. And uh, looks like Tato is going to lose another knight over here. Meanwhile, Tato going for a siege forward over on this side. And he's got knights coming in here. He's going to find that stone, right? Viper will quick wall that. Tato sends these knights back around. Viper's going to have some monks in defense. He also has villagers there to make gates. There we go. One monk goes down. No, I don't think elephant archers need a bonus against buildings, PJ. I think that would be kind of ridiculous. You wouldn't even need siege at that point. 
Like Cav is here, but I don't know if Tato notices that. Uh, he should be able to kill this monk, right? Bop, bop, bop. Yeah, delete it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so Tato is at 97 villagers against 91 from Viper. Severe military advantage here for Tato, though. And, oh, Viper's going to get two conversions. He gets two conversions as Tato has gone for the Castle Age Capped Ram, a specialty of the Cumans. Monks will survive here. Capped Ram will attempt to be taken out here by Viper. And it's not going to go down. Villagers could come forward to repair that, which Tato is doing right now. Viper can even one hit that with a villager or a pikeman or something. And here comes the pikeman, but the vills will be there in time and the relics will be ejected which means minus two attack for the knights from viper and there's more knights coming from tato this area over here is really really exposed now for viper even with three barracks that's just too many knights there's capped rams to take out the buildings we've got two monks from viper and that's it two monks and some pikemen What about the armor? Well, PJ, of course you're going to make the worst the unit worse if it's from the archer range, right? The old elephant archers for Indians were not a bad unit. The only bad thing about them was that you had to make castles to produce them. And it was like a slow build up. So you have to make the unit significantly worse if you make it producible from the archer range. Steppies! Or Steppy, as we should... Why are we talking about LR? I don't know. PJ asked the question. Okay, Viper's got 89 bills to 116. Tats is still looking to be in a great position. Unfortunately, this castle may be denied. No. Knights can't quite target those remaining three villagers. And there's more villagers on the way. Meanwhile, castle over here for Viper as he tries to secure the gold in the center of the map. Adding some more farms back here. Viper's military count is at 12. Tatsu's is at 32. And he's working away on all these buildings. Has access to the gold over there. Has those two relics. Viper is not looking to be in a good position. It's a really well played game from Tato. Really, really well played game. 30 villagers ahead now for Tato. So we see a castle over here from Viper. Kipjack. Oh my. It can't even defend itself itself against an old man. It can't even go toe to toe with an old man. You see, in the center here from Tato, Viper's taking this gold. Tato shouldn't allow that, that's for sure. He does have a lot of gold in the bank, typical Viper style, banking up a ton of gold. And Tato taking out all his buildings over here. Tato has, like, once again, has 75% of the map control. How many plus two knights should he have to take out a TC with fletching? If it's fully garrisoned with Vils, I don't know. You could probably do it with like 12, 13, something like that. But like, do you really want to commit to it? Maybe they could be doing better things. Imperial Age coming in for Mr. Tato. Also, is your opponent on garrisoning on the other side and repairing with some Vils? It's another question, right? Imperial Age on the way for Viper and he's going to go help. He is going to go help, and Tato will have some Kipjacks to deal with that, potentially. He's going to go for another castle over here. Viper could go help Skirm, though. That could be an issue for Tato. I think Lithuanians match up really well. They match up really well against most civs in him, to be honest. But against Cumans, I think they have a lot of options. Halb Skirm is good. Halb is just great against Cumans in general. You're forcing your opponent to go Kipjack. 
Uh, you also have all the monk texts, your bomber cannon as well. But with this eco lead, I think Tanto can just steamroll in early Imperial Age. Don't humans have insane scorpions? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think you're you're thinking about Khmer, my friend. Herbal medicine, puffin dat herb. He's gonna heal up all his knights. Watch, knight HP go burp. burp. You're gonna be fully healed in a second. Pass it around. Tati could just go SO. Yeah, he can. He can. There's so much access to gold. And he's going to go for... Trebs. Conscription. Chemistry. Cavalier. And what else? Thumb ring. He gets so many techs right now, dude. He's got so much res. <laughs> Another castle here. Got outposts over here to look for the expansion from Viper. It's got villagers over here. Could potentially place a castle on that woodline too. Second gold upgrade coming in. Lots of wood for him. Could sell that. Looks like Viper's hit the market first. And Viper is really limited on gold. He's got this gold over here. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it for the time being. That gold and one relic. No access to the middle. So he hit the market early. To get the good prices, to get the techs in. He's got 49 halberdiers, four latest on the way. He's got four on the field. And the knights for Tato, soon to be Cavalier, have healed up and they are going around the outside. Tato is simply going to defend here with Kipchak. And we finally found a situation where Kipchak can be very useful in a very choke pointy area against Halb. This is the human answer to Halb, right? It's Kipchak. And there's Onager as well, another answer. And he's certainly, if he holds control of this middle area, he's certainly going to have enough gold for Siege Onager as well. This is looking pretty awful for Viper, just because he doesn't have that much gold left. And here come the Cavalier. They will go directly to this gold. Does Tato know about that? He doesn't know about the gold, but he does know about the stone, and he can, he can suspect that there might be something over on that side. Crop rotation, masonry, hoardings, <laughs> two-man saw, <laughs> plate barding armor. So many techs for Tato. He's going to have everything. He could go Paladin, SO, Elite, Kipchak, everything. Viper will make a wall here. Oh, he hit it at the last possible second. Cavalier cannot get in. Maybe over here. But no, there's no opportunities. I think what Tato needs to do is bring this this Onager over here and like cut a path through to the middle for these Cavalier. Because they're going to have to run all the way back around to get there. We have Kipchak. Elite Kipchak here. Non-elite latest. Bombard Cannon's coming out. Onager here and Kipchak have finally found a position in which they can be useful. Against latest help in choke pointed area. And he's sniping down the Bombard Cannons. Nice. Still has to run away. For the time being, anyway. And he'll lose his siege. But Paladin is incoming. Paladin is incoming from Tato. And this army has been saved. Wait a minute and 30 seconds before you send these in. And then just overwhelm Viper. I think would be the play. He can save this castle. He's got more than enough stone to repair that for a while. He's got the Onagers. Got the Kipjacks. Has the castle set up. Viper is losing Halbs at a ferocious rate. And there's another castle at the top here from Tato to further deny that gold. Viper going out for gold here. He's used the, the time the Halbs bought him to go out for the gold. But the Kipchaks are coming back this way, and Tata will easily snipe down these Bomber Cannons. And he's waiting in the wings. 
with the Paladin army. He's waiting over here. Interesting. Is he going to go for Petards? Ooh, this is going to be brutal, dude. This is going to be absolutely brutal. Tato just distracting Viper over on this side. Attack rounding in the middle of these trebuchet. Takes out this bomber cannon. Loses a lot of his skipjacks, actually. Loses so many of his skipjacks. Bit of a throw there. Trying to get a little bit too fancy on that side. Not too fancy over here, though. Very, very good plays on this side. And the petards will attack. And Tato has to follow up immediately. He has to get in here before Viper can quick wall. And if Viper doesn't quick wall this, this game is over. Yeah, Viper doesn't even notice this. Uh-oh, Viper looks in the back of his base. There's paladins all over the place. Meanwhile, Siege Ram's coming at the same time, and he calls the GG. Just too many things to do, too many fires to put out. Tato, the crazy, crazy early push from Cumans. Got the great eco behind it, and uh, Viper couldn't compete. Great stuff. He got everything, dude. He was getting Siege Onager. He had Paladin. He had Elite Kipchak. Like, when you have this much access to gold and uh, 130 villagers when advancing to the Imperial Age, you got a lot of economy. KD, 201 to 92. Viper was just behind that entire game, it felt like. Imagine blinking and seeing a paladin army in your base. Well, I think everyone in this chat, everyone who's played Age of Empires against another person has had that moment at some point. You know, you're like, oh, I'm pushing back. I'm doing well. You're telling your team, like, I'm, I'm killing him. They're like, oh, great job, dude. And then you look back in your base and you're like, I'm dead. Play all five or best of five? Best of five. The tournament. Not a show match. Grasses, thank you for the 17, 20 months, actually. Chippy, thank you for the four months. Hello, Chippy. Tutan Paladin, no less. Oh, happened to me yesterday. I thought you were saying those were Tutan Paladin. I was thinking. Okay. Uh, Jungle Rumble for Tato. Now we go on to Zawal. Zawal. And we have Teutons, Mayans, Hindustanis for Viper against Poles, Italians, Chinese. If you think Tato is going to pick Italians here, do you go for Hindustanis? Can Hindustanis really be used on Fortress all that well? I feel like Mayans against Chinese is a good bet, right? Tato go for Poles. I think Tato would probably go for Poles here. Poles or Italians, probably. But maybe Tato mixes it up and goes for Poles on Fortress. He's definitely not going for Italians on Fortress. This is the thought process that is going through Viper's head right now. Hmm. Mark that wind down for Tato. And then we. Tato is left and Viper is right. Dude. Use your eyes, brother man. Use your eyes. GL the Viper. GL Tato. Use your eyes, please. I have flipped their position using the clever little button on captain's mode. You got the sieve draft wrong. Why are you doubling down on this? 
Oh, F, yes. <laughs> Three messages. What's the elo? Are these guys any good? No, no, they're just, they're trash. I am noob. Okay. You probably came from Viper or Tattoo stream, right? And you saw it the other way around? Or you saw on the Captain's Mode website? You can flip the positions. Now, Tato, I think, was higher seated for this tournament. Uh, so he should theoretically be on the left side. Um, but I like to keep Viper's name there just because he's more famous player. So I usually put the more famous player on the left. And then I'll just switch the draft. Because the seeding for Walhalla, I mean, we talked about how they did the seeding previously. Um, and it was basically a duck race. <laughs> it was a duck race. Let me show you right now. This was the seeding. <laughs> Yo, Vanessa Viper, Jordan, Tato, Doubt, ACCM. <laughs> So innovative. Also, the greatest reply to a tweet ever from Arthur Kraft. I liked it. You have to love CL for continually coming up with innovative tournaments that none of their member members actually qualify for. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's great. I love it. Okay, we're still waiting. They're still in the lobby right now. Hera not here? Well, Hera's not really that fond of Arena, right? Neither is Mr. Yo. But Mr. Yo actually played in this, I believe. Is he still in? Uh, yeah, Yo is still in. He's going to match up against Valus. Looks like Valus, uh, spoiler, oh, spoiler alert, Valus actually beat ACCM. 3-2. So Valis, dude, Valis is a beast. The surprise, though, is the final match in the quarterfinals, which is running against Ganji. Running beating Doubt 3-1 and Ganji beating Valesa 3-0, which is super impressive. I could see Doubt losing to running, but I never would have saw Valesa losing to Ganji, especially with a, a sweep. Yo, Hassan, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the two months, dude. Hassan, Hassan, I don't know. Ganji flying. Yo, Ganji is kind of going nuts so right now. Draken said yesterday this tournament was not an arena tournament. Okay, well, it's a it's a closed map kind of tournament. We can call it an arena tournament. Whatever whatever copium helps him sleep at night. Is Valis some old guy with a new name or a guy who got good? He's been around for a long time, Skip. I remember Valis, uh, Nations Cup 2017. So basically, I was the captain of Canada B. And what we did with Canada B, because it was a severe lack of players, we just took whoever we could get. It was me and another guy who were decent players. And we took people in that like had played 10 multiplayer games before. And we'd, we'd give them a spot. And then we'd like cheer them on just because it was super fun. It was great. It was really fun. And we'd just like teach them stuff and let it make them feel included and stuff. And it was great. And we'd cycle them out. We'd never play all of our best players. It was always me and the other guy. And then we'd have two other people like cycling in and out. Um, and we actually won. A, I think we won a set against Netherlands, of course. But we got matched up against Finland B, which had Valis at the time. Valis was like a 2K player or something on Vubly. And uh, against this team of misfits, Valis comes forward, lames my boar, lames half of my sheep, lames my dock villager, and then lames me some more. No mercy. No mercy. That is my first interaction with Valis. 
laming my team. We had like we had literal new players on my team, and he lamed the hell of, out of us. So you guys won? No, no. I did wall in one of his villagers though, which was fun. Did you cry? I was not very pleased. I think like all of that Nations Cup. I don't think I got pissed off once except that game <laughs> because it was like it seemed like such a greasy maneuver you know like we are so unlikely to win that laming is not even necessary and he still comes forward to do it it just it it felt very ugh. i don't mind laming especially in tournaments but when you're up against someone who's so much worse than you to credit to him maybe he didn't look at the ratings he was just trying to win. So. If they do another Nations Cup, I'm going to train up to be on Canada B. Good. All right. Because Canada B would actually, we're going to, we're going to cause some damage if there's another Nations Cup. Canada B represent. I just hope the next Nations Cup, I know it's probably going to need to be 3v3 because otherwise teams like Norway wouldn't have a team. And, like, there'd be a lot of popular players excluded. But I hope it's 4v4. Just because 4v4 is more fun. Okay, Tanto against Viper on the wall. And Tanto has gone for Poles and Viper has gone for Teutons. Okay. Now, Teutons against Italians. You know, maybe not the greatest Civ matchup. So, Viper kind of figured that Tanto would go for Poles here. And he's picked Teutons. So, he took a risk. And uh, it's paid off. Students against Poles is a pretty good Civ matchup, in my opinion. Change CA to bet. Oh, I have it on play all five. That's why you asked that question. Okay. Okay. I was it on play all. Oh, because I had to play all nine previously. <clears throat> Thank you. I was wondering why you were asking that question. Whoever asked that before. That makes sense now. Okay, so the wall. We have Gaia walls. You're going to have to get through these walls to get to your opponent. Um, there's lots of snow leopards in this case blocking the way as well. So you have to be concerned about your villagers. And... Viper is going to... Bring this back. I'm wondering why his Ibex had that much food. Oh! Did he go out, shoot that Ibex with the Vils, gather the food from it, and then drop the Lumber Camp so he was dropping off the food at the same time? Very clever from him. Very, very clever from Viper. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my god, Tato! Get Tato! That is a panic moment right there. Holy tits. Oh my god. Tato managing to save that villager somehow. He is Poles, so she's going to heal up over time. But we got to watch that one again. Like, that is some crazy maneuvering there from Tato. So he basically, he shoots the boar, right? At the same time, the snow leopard comes in. So then he starts fighting the Snow Leopard. The boar gets an extra hit. He comes over here trying to block with the scout. The Snow Leopard is inside. The scout is now blocking the wall. He clicks towards that. And he gets the wall down at exactly the right moment. Fantastic stuff from Tato to save that villager. And she's going to heal up over time. I wonder if he would have died there if not for pulls. She was down to like 1 HP. Would he have died? I don't know. Crazy. Actually crazy. All right, Ibex being pushed in for work is already down. Tootin's maybe a better counter to Poles than some of the other civs that Viper had, but still Poles are extremely dangerous, folks. Extremely, extremely dangerous. Partly because of this, right? You get full works down, you get a percentage of the farm food right away as soon as it's completed. You can see it's subtracted from that. And uh, partly because they can spam Cavalier or Knights with Slata privileges. Slata? Slata privileges? I think it's Slata. Close enough. 
and uh, their knights will cost less gold. Also, they get gold while mining stone somehow, and you can see Tato already going out to that stone to take advantage of that. Viper is on the way to Feudal Age, and Viper will go up for eco upgrades, I guess. Poles do deposit food when they complete a farm, but Teutons make their farms cheaper. So he gets the farm upgrade and then starts placing them down. This isn't an FC build. He doesn't have enough, right? He just doesn't have enough. Yeah, eco upgrades. And the farms will come down soon from Viper. As the first one, waits till Horse Collar is in and places that. Tanto still has the Snow Leopard walled in. It's a nice little zoo. Maybe he can charge for admission later, you know? Snow Leopards are pretty rare. And Tato is going to be able to FC off this. Viper won't be too far behind. His food count is still looking nice. He's going out to gold now. He's getting all of his farms set up. But it's a good build from Tato. Remember, there, there is this wall in between. So if Tato wants to get through that, he's probably going to have to go for a castle to stop that. Also, Tato just mining enough stone to get enough gold to sell maybe wood to go up to the next stage. Is he going to have it up? He can sell stone to get up. But is he going to have enough to sell wood or food to get up? He'll probably sell stone instead. Yeah. You saved the leopard for late game tourism buff. Yep. Sell stone. Or is he waiting to sell wood? He's got to idle his... Yeah, he just sells the stone. <laughs> It'll take too long. It'll take too long. He's going to sell the stone there. And he still has one villager collecting here. And he clicks up to the next stage. 16 seconds of idle TC time for Tato. Only 7 seconds for Viper. And Viper is going to be a little bit behind him. But he's going to have all of his farms with extra food on them. His tabs have got Horse Collar and Double Bed Axe, and he's going to add another full work in front and start adding farms around that. Wall HP, 1080. So standard stone wall. Look at these relics. They're like right on top of each other. Three relics on either side, by the way. So instant income. Whole wall is visible, right? Uh, don't think it is no it's not there is no wood line or anything in between so you can like cut through and i've seen it before people you know people put outposts over here but then someone will go and cut through on the very edge and then bring an army through it's risky though because if your opponent just walls here it's you're done no the middle walls aren't visible to the players at all times no Viper is going to be a minute behind Tato to the castle age. And Tato goes for an extra TC. Another TC. And of course he's going to have the food to support 3 TC because of poles. Just drop a couple extra farms once heavy plow is in and you'll get food instantaneously. Eco is going to be looking very nice indeed. Is Viper on a low or is he usual monster player mode? Viper, um, I don't know. We haven't really, like, I, I don't know if we've seen ultra competitive Viper in the last few months. So I don't know what he's going to be looking like, right? He didn't have to go through the qualifiers for Red Bull. He played in Titans League and lost to Valesa. Um, he played an RMS Cup, and I believe he lost to Tato in RMS Cup, correct? Um, but I don't know how seriously he took either of those tournaments. He's still very, very good. 
but we won't really get a read on how well he's playing until um until Red Bull Legacy. He's currently wearing a clown wig. Okay. <laughs> Should Viper try to 4TC this? I don't know. I don't know what you're playing into if you're Viper. You're just playing into a castle stack on this side. We can see it, lots of his resources forward, right? Like two golds and a stone. You get a Teuton castle stack here with crenellations. Is there anything Poles can do? That's my question. You get like two or three castles across the middle with crenellations. Can Poles do anything against that? You probably, BBC, BBC will die to the castles, right? Trebs? I mean, yeah. Can go Trebs. Viper could go Bomber Cannons of Zone. Obviously, he's playing into Teutonic Knights. Yeah, maybe. If Viper gets Herbal Medicine, Castle Stack, Teutonic Knights, he can engage against the Obuk from the Polish player. And then he goes and heals his Teutonic Knights up, regains the armor, and then sends them out again. That's the ideal for Viper as he grabs both of the relics already. And Tato is starting to grab relics of his own. 50 villagers for Tato, 44 for Viper. And if we look at the resources, the food count for Tato should be higher yet. It's the major difference. Also the wood as well. And the stone, gold, of course. He hasn't been gathering gold. He hasn't gone to gold all game. Okay. And he's already got 460 just from the stone. Well, I guess in the market and the market too. And the relics. By pursuing 5TC. Oh, he's got the fourth one already. Kind of unfair. One side gets three relics. Both sides get three relics. Kind of unfair. Map scripting. Unfair. Admins. Cheating. Viper should have a lot less on wood as Teutons. His wood's looking pretty good to me. I don't know. Debs really need to nerf the pulls to stone to gold collection. It's way too hard. I agree. That's my opinion. As we see both players engaging against these snow leopards with the scouts, they can simply heal these scouts up later. It's funny they both got that idea at exactly the same time. I think, like, the full work system, you can't nerf the full work system. I think it's just too unique of a bonus, and I think it's fine. Uh, the problem is the synergy of everything else with the save, right? Maybe you can make select the privileges a little bit more expensive, or maybe you could make the effect a little bit less uh, for the cost on the knights. But I think the big thing you need to nerf with poles is instead of a one or directly half stone gathered from every gold gathered, you can make it like 20%. Instead of 50%. That way the Polish player would be more inclined to go on the gold right away than to stone. And they couldn't protect their eco or get a castle up as fast. Please rewind. How did Viper heal his scout that far away? You all, your lives are so sad. I get a charity tax break just for hanging out with you. Please rewind how to. I, I don't want to rewind for that. I don't even know when that is. Bye. Air Qual, thank you for the uh, three months. 12 months, actually, dude. Oh, you mean three months. Okay, nine plus three. I see. I see what you're getting at. At Dave AOE, you are the best caster ever. I don't know, man. I saw some guy on the ECG, uh, ECG television Twitch chat. Twitch channel casting AoE 4. He sounded Greek. He was pretty good. How's it going, dude? <laughs> We're like a month and a half away from Heidelberg. It's lots of privileges. There it is. Fuck you all. Your Here they come. Tax break just for out with you. 
What map is this crazy one? It's called Zawal. You can always see the map name down here. Here they come, and Viper's on stone. Now, remember what I said. If Viper gets the castle set up, crenellations, herbal medicine, Teutonic Knights. <laughs> there's a lot. Bomber cannons. <laughs> there's a lot of... Listen. There's a lot of uh, things that he needs. Okay? But if he does get it, it would be really tough for the poles. What's Viper's endgame there? I just laid it out. Castles, crenellations, elite TK... He's going into Halb. Because he knows this is coming. And Petards are coming out for Tato. Cavalier is coming in. Imperial Age is still two minutes away from Viper. He's going to go for a castle here. And he's just going to hold with his resources back here. And then he's going to push out later. Once he gets enough Halbs. It'll be difficult though. Because Tato will have another castle. And he'll be able to go into Obuk to support his Cavalier. He's also dropping more Fulworks. If he needs food right away. Crop rotation coming in. It's going to be a lot of food directly injected into his eco. Yo, Paradox. Thank you for the gift set to Mista and Fangita. Good. Nice. Two good gifters there. I'm officially five subs away from 2,000 subs. I have 2,027 sub points. So we unlock the next tier thanks to... Uh, Basil and um, Urban earlier. Eco compare check. We like eco compare. Eco compare check. Chatting. More farms on the way. Well, Viper's going so. Snake. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's what I'm talking about. We got there. 2,000 subs. That's my record. That's my record. For sure. Jeez. Goya, thank you for the prime. Make Tootins great again. Applicable name. FM with the five gifted. Guys, okay, stop. We're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. We have a big epic. The devil herself. Fuck you thank all. you. For the five gifted. Crazy. Just so you can reach your goals. Alright, here they come. Cavalier. Viper's already walled behind though. But Viper is not walled behind here. Cavalier can just go right past the castle. Viper needs to be very careful. He's left the mangonels out to dry. Gold villagers still collecting on this side. Poips! With the 10 gifted. Thank you, dude. I have to pay attention to the game. This is gonna be a very important moment, okay? Very important moment. Barracks coming in. Clem, thank you for the prime. Poips, thank you so much, dude. And the Cavalier can't find a way in. They cannot find a way in. Remember, Viper, plan to open Halberdier. And he's got the barracks behind to hold this. He's going for more barracks. He's got 128 villagers, 41 farmers. Farms are set up quite nicely at the back here. Handcart is in as well, so farmers are very efficient. Lots of food in the bank. And bomber cannons coming out. However, pole cavalier are absolutely freaking ridiculous. And you can add an old book behind. It looks like Tatsu has enough stone for another castle. Viper has both these golds forward and the stone here. If Tato can get a castle set up here, probably right there, I think. He's going for one. Ooh. That's a little bit... I think that's a little bit risky. I think if you play this safe... It's better. That one's going to be within range from behind Viper's walls. But we'll see. We'll see. Viper has bomber cannons on the way out. And Tatsu's gotten in. He's going to take out these villagers on the gold. How much gold does Viper have left? A decent amount. Tatsu's going to start building the castle. It's getting Blast Furnace. Gonna have a lot of Obuk. He's gonna have certainly a lot of Cavalier. I mean, 42 Cavalier already. Viper now going for Fortified Wall, and he's gonna approach from this side with the Bomber Cannons. And this Castle Foundation forward. This is what I was concerned about, right? With this, if he puts it back here, the Bomber Cannons have to come out a little bit further. They can't range from behind the walls here either. And I think they're a lot more exposed for Tato to come in and try and snipe them. This castle might just die as soon as it's completed. But Tata will still have enough stone maybe for another one. 
And yeah, that cast is simply dead. Viper is going to like the looks of that. Farmer Cannon's pushing out, takes out the trap, and that's a lot of Halberdiers, but it is a lot of Obuk as well. An elite Obuk is in. Viper will now have to tech into something else. Potentially hand cannons. He doesn't have that much gold, so going full gold comp is difficult. As we see that fortified walls being useful here. The pal or sorry, Cavalier trying to sneak their way in. Tattoo is simply attack grounding in between the houses. He's trying to take out both of them. Viper will delete and fortify wall behind that. Obuk being taken out by Halbs. And is Viper going to hold this? Oh, he's trying! He denies the Cavalier from coming in. So important to stop those Cavalier coming into his base. Obuk are absolutely destroying these Halberdiers. But Viper has so many of them. And there's Crenellations right there. Teutonic Knights making their way onto the field. Obuk will strip the armor from these Teutonic Knights, but the, the Teutonic Knights will win that battle, for sure. If they're a lead, anyway. And the Cavalier are in. Oh, disastrous times for Viper. He was holding this for so long. Cavalier are in. He's going to have to send Halberdiers back. He retreats with his Bombard Cannons. And this is what he was trying to avoid. This is why he put so much emphasis on stopping these Cavalier coming in this side. Because now he has to take his eye off the main fight at the front and bring back all the halb or halberdiers to clear this. Zapple guy, devil herself. Thank you. Thank you. And he's going to lose some of the bomber cannons, maybe? No, he does not. The poles are knocking at the door here. Still trying to get in. Fortified Wall was such a great tech there from Viper. Bomber Cannons coming up, but the Siege Workshops are being worked on. And Viper is going for hand cannons over on this side. Why are there six relics? Because it's the map. Of course there's six relics. It's a custom map. Oh, will this be taken out before the Bomber Cannons come in? No. One more Bomber Cannon will be added here by Tato. Viper still dealing with these Obuk with simply Halbs and a few hand cannons behind. Tato does not lose the Bombard Cannons. Does lose one now though. And Viper is trying to micro this down behind all of this, behind the reinforcements, managing the eco, etc. They're playing dodgeball with these Bombard Cannons and Viper's going to lose that Treb. But he'll take out this Bomber cannon, and he's adding in hand cannons behind. Poles will start to really start, really fall off here as the game gets later. In a choke pointy map like this, it will start to fall off. They're late Imperial. If you can't get momentum with the uh, Cavalier, they're late Imperial, especially in a choke pointy map, is kind of underwhelming. In my opinion, Obuk are good. Winged Hussar get a slight damage bonus versus uh, hand cannon, but if you can't get close to the hand cannon, you're going to run into some real problems, and the halberdiers are going to be in front. What's up, bullet? And Viper has access to the gold again. Viper's hand cannons, well. The halbs maybe aren't enough. The Halbs aren't enough. The Obuk are shredding those. Absolutely shredding those. And the Bomber Cannons need to retreat. But the Bomber Cannons, he saved all of them. He saved all of his Bomber Cannons. done such a great job this game. I don't think he's lost a single one yet. I might have jinxed him. I think I did jinx him there. I think I did jinx him. I think I, j I jinxed him. Sorry, Viper. Shouldn't Winged Hussar with Trample Damage do okay versus Halbs as well? Uh, I mean, they do better than other Hussar, but... There's the Winged Hussar right there. I mean, okay, maybe? They won't do good. Viper trying to snipe these down. It's not enough, though. 
trying to gain access to this gold. He's down to 127 now. Oh! Oh, shit! Bombard cannons from Tats are coming over to this side. They were playing dodgeball behind all of these fights. And in case you didn't see it, there used to be four Bombard cannons there from Viper. There used to be four, and then there were one. There was one. Holy, what an attack round there from Tato. Oh my goodness, as we speed up here, because I'm a little bit for, far behind. Both players just kind of posturing in the middle here. It looks like the Winged Star are getting in from Tato. They're through the walls, and Viper attempting to go for more Wallace behind that, attempting to snipe these bomber cannons over here. The Obuk are in on this side, though. Tato still trying to deal with this push. Viper still trying to take out the bomber cannons from Tato. Viper still trying to gain access to his gold. As so we see the winged Hussar fall. Oh, but destroying Halberdiers. KD in favor of Tato here. As he loses a bomber cannon. He might lose another one! Get sniped! Frenulations on this castle is doing work. Already 25 kills on that bad boy. Obuk trying to get that final bomber cannon and they don't get it. They don't get it. And Tato's being fully pushed back. Tato is being fully pushed back. Now remember, Tato will have more access to gold this game. He's taking the gold forward here. He also has all of the stone in his base. So half of that stone value will be converted into gold as he mines it. And gold continues to be a major issue for Viper. So we see the Winged Hussar coming in. They get bonus damage against gunpowder units and bop. One bomber cannon going down and it's only one. Halberdier is now engaging against this bomber cannon. Tato gets a good snipe over there. Winged Hussar folds. This bomber cannon was at 2 HP and the Winged Hussar just die immediately. And Tato loses another bomber cannon. And Viper has gained control of his side. This is an incredible game. Are the extra golds and stones in front the norm? Or is Viper just unlucky? I think Tato had a stone here and he had a gold here. So, slightly unlucky. But it's not like Tato didn't have forward res of his own. Tato is still repairing that castle. He has no stone in the bank. Can't repair it for very long. I think you have to kind of give up on this castle maybe. Maybe not, though. He's, he's trying to pull these bomber cans out of position. Trying to come in here with the Winged Hussar. Adding skirmishers now, which Viper will attack. And doesn't get them. Oh, he gets one. Wow. If Viper ever actually secures his side of the map, I think this game might be over. If he ever, like, gets access to this stone and the remains of this gold and just has Halb, Hand Cannon Army here, I think the game might be over. But Tato is doggedly holding on to this position. It's a crazy match, honestly. Tato gonna buy some more stone to repair this. Tato just kind of sending units in. Viper has to babysit his army constantly. He can't lose the hand cannons. He doesn't want to lose the bombard cannons. He's still got three mangonels somewhere. Oh, they're over here. Is he going into Onager to deal with the skirm? Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Nice snipe there from Tato. Great snipe there from Tato. So we see Viper sniping a bomber cannon, reciprocating. And there is Onager there from Viper. Will he be able to take out the skirms? Mangonel is trying to get within range. The bomber cannons are still there from Tato. And he loses a bomber cannon. Winged Hussar do get plus damage against gunpowder units. I think it's plus four bonus damage. Crazy that castle is still up. I think Viper adds a treb. Yeah. Go for a treb. 
Go for it, Treb. Set it up here. That extra range is going to be really valuable. If he wants to snipe the Treb, he's going to have to send the Bomber Cannons forward. Obuk. Almost being taken out there by the Onagers. And the Onagers are all going to survive. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Tata's got to be concerned about this army. He's trying to get in. He's trying to get in for some counter raids. But even if he damages that wall, there's nothing to go through there. Where are the winged Tassar? They're all in the queue. They're waiting in the queue. And it's a Treb and another Bomber Cannon and another Treb from Viper. And Tato is going to lose this castle finally. This castle has 75 kills, by the way, before it goes down. And Tato's going to lose the Skirmishers too. What an insane hold from Viper. Also insane value on the Bomber Cannons from Tato. <gasps> I say that. I say that, but it looks like he might lose some of them. Viper attack grounding here. Oh, he doesn't get them. He doesn't get them, and he's going to lose another Bomber Cannon. But he has cleared up this stone. If he gets a castle over here with Frenelations, could be really dangerous. He's setting up the treads too. Maybe he's thinking about killing those Bomber Cannons. Goes after a wall segment. Okay, Viper. <laughs> That's super important, by the way. Kills the wall! How many kills does Viper's castle have? It has 45. And he's killing more of the wall. Viper now has access to this gold over here. 1,000 gold. And uh, 1,400 stone. And Tato is busted through over here, so Viper needs to relocate his army. Good quick walls on that side. Winged Hussar looking for some opportunities. It's it's a clusterfuck over here, though. He's not going to find many ways in. He's going to find choke points with Halbs waiting in a back alley. And Viper is now pushing. What an insane game. Honestly, great set so far. Crazy. Every game's been good. Viper gets another castle, man. If Viper gets another castle, it's going to be really tough for Tato. I think you only place one, though. I think you place one castle here from Viper, and then you use the rest of the stone to repair against any treads he has coming out against it. If you place two castles, you're at risk of not having any stone to repair. Siege Ram from Tato. This is the point in the game where the Poles' army comp is very underwhelming. They don't get the final armor upgrade on the Skirmishers. They do have Winged Hussar, which is something Viper does not have access to. But Winged Hussar doesn't get you that much if everything is being funneled through Halberdiers. And the hand cannons are here to deal with any Obook he adds in. Dude, this Siege Ram is just tanking shots from that Halb. And Tassara looking to come through again. KD is evening out. It was really far in front for Tato there for a very long time. Starting to even out. Good shots from the Onager. Wing Tassar coming in and they're all going to die. I don't think any of these Onagers go down. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Bye bye, Wing Tassar. Viper almost... He has enough for a castle. He has enough for a castle. There's Bomber Cannon there, so he has to maybe kill that Bomber Cannon before he places the Foundation. I think that would be awful to lose it right away. Also, clearing up these Winged Hussar would be really valuable. He is killing all the Skirms, though. He's killed a lot of Skirms. These Onagers have 16 kills. He's trying to take out this Bomber Cannon, and he does. And I think the castle will follow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. He's trying to take out this Bomber Cannon too. And he's going to do it. And there's the castle. There's the castle right now. It'll go up and I think that'll tell Tato. 
It's time to maybe think about hitting that resign button, but he goes for two trebs, so he's going to try and take this castle down. I think your only chance of taking this castle down is building up trebs in reserve. Sending them in one at a time probably won't do it. Because that'll give Viper t time to mentally prepare. I think you need like four trebs. And then you come out, unpack them all at the same time, and then attack it. He's selling more. He's selling more and he's adding siege ramps. Interesting. Okay. He's not adding trebs. He's adding siege ramps. How did Tato finish gold first when he was also getting vipers? Uh, he mined it. The Drem's coming over here. He's forcing all of Viper's army to this side. And he's going to attack the castle with Trebs at the same moment. Viper does not have anything that can just kind of run in there and deal with those. He's going to have to notice this, though. If he loses that castle, it could be really bad. That castle is attacking a siege workshop. Okay, now it's starting to work on this stuff. Wing Kassar coming in. Viper sends a lot of ills over to repair. Tato is trying for a big push here. Viper has four Bombard Cannons, though. Still repairing this castle. Tato is using all of his gold. All of his gold. He has no gold left. Viper also has no gold left. He's got 252, and that's it. He goes for Gates! Doesn't get them in time, and the Wingus are in, and he might lose the Bombard Cannons because of it. Halbs are trying to defend them. Bombard Cannons all dying. Damn. Tato is going to maybe lose the Trebs as well. Viper attack rounding in between, and both the Trebs go down. That is a... Those are units that... Tato cannot replace as Viper attempts to suck all the remaining juice out of this final gold. He's hooked the shop back up to this gold. <laughs> Wing to Sarin Eco. They were in the Eco for a moment. Viper's down to 106 villagers. Remember, Teutons can only go for scouts. They have no Hussar, not even a light cab option. They can only go for scouts. So... Tato should have the trash advantage here. Also, Teutons not getting Bracer. Tato, if this game goes any later... No gold for either player. Should have the advantage. And he's still got two bomber cannons. And he's got a trebuchet attack in this castle. And Viper is officially out of stone. He needs to deal with that treb. ASAP. Also a ram over here working away too. On that castle. Viper now selling so that he can buy extra stone to repair. He's trying to prevent these wing to start coming in. The quick walls have been on point from him this game. But he's still not dealing with that treb. He still hasn't dealt with these bomber cannons. He's going to send the Halbs in maybe to get the Treb. He needs to protect his Onagers. No more stone to repair this castle. Oh, boy. Katie is getting closer. Oh, Tato. Tato takes it. GG, well played. Tato goes through. Oh my god, dude. We saw all the swings there. We saw the, the strength of Poles early imp. And then we saw Viper push it back. We saw the strength of Teutons against Poles in mid imp. To mid to late imp. And then we get to super late imp. And Viper just runs out of gold. He knows his trash op options are not as good as Tato. And uh, wow, what a game. Crazy. Didn't you say it was GG for Tato? Yeah, I said it was looking bad for him. But he did a really good job sniping the siege, and Viper didn't have any options to kill the uh, the Trebs behind Frittato. Really good stuff.
Like, if Viper still has those four bomber cannons, I think it's a completely different game. But Tato did a really good job sniping them. Also, if we get late enough with Viper completely out of gold, then Poles should win. It's a swing, right? It's a matchup swing. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. KD. Big KD for 1v1. We see the eco right there. Food collected for Tato. I mean, poles are kind of nuts, right? You see how much more gold he had. He was taking some gold from Viper's base, um, but he also had all the gold from the stones in his own base. Cool. 8 p.m. Well, they had some peaks here. Some nice little peaks, but overall, fairly standard, and uh, Tato moves on. Great set. Really, really great set. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I hope you did, too.